Hi, I'm Tim Bartz, Internet Sales Manager here at Law MacArthur Ford in Salina, Kansas, where you can find the most in-depth video walkarounds on the different Ford and Lincoln uh, videos, different models, as well as even down to the trim. So we like to call them our complete guide because we go over standard as well as optional equipment. So if you're looking for some videos like that that maybe have this productivity screen, definitely check out our YouTube channel. Uh, it will be linked. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, just go ahead and uh, click on over to that. Even subscribe while you're at it. If you're watching this on our website, you can check that out on our video library, all those different walkarounds as well. So hopefully this video will help you out. We're going to cover this 8-inch uh, productivity screen you find in your trucks and your expeditions. Uh, so very thorough video. We're going to go through each one of these different screens. So let's talk about this 8-inch productivity screen. Uh, what I love about this screen is it's a little bit bigger. You're going to find this in your uh, Ford Expedition XLT 202A equipment group as well as your Limited and Platinum. And then on your F-150s, you're going to find it on your Lariat trim, Platinum, King Ranch, and Limited as well as on your Super Duty. Same way, you're going to find it on your Lariat, King Ranch, Platinum, and Limited. So a uh, very special screen. I really like this uh, the screen. I do have an Expedition XLT that has this screen on it. Uh, so very uh, nice screen because it includes some things you don't get on some of the other productivity screens like the dual 4.2 inch from your vehicles because uh, it has more customizations in here with your off-road as well as your towing uh, controls and, and functions in there. So we're going to cover this pretty in-depth here. So uh, stick with me. It might be a little long video, but I do want to cover everything in here uh, and of course I'll have those models that we talked about down in the description if you're watching this on YouTube uh, as well as uh, probably flash it on the screen as well when we discuss that so let's go ahead and start here and you'll notice there's a star on the court completely on the left side we're gonna skip over that for now that is where you can customize your view so first I'm going to talk about the different screens and then we'll go back and show you how you can customize and add some of these different things that you might like as your favorites over there on a custom screen. So we'll start here with the trip fuel, which is the second tab over. You can see as I flip through, there's uh, tabs at the top that go through these in the first one, or the, technically the, the first uh, customization, but the second tab over is gonna be that trip fuel. And you can see there you have trip one. So let's go ahead and hit okay. You can also uh, move the arrow over. And you're gonna see on the trip one here, you can see the squares to the left of the word trip. You can see one now is white and the others are grayed out. And so we, it shows you how many different screens there are when you go down and when you come back up to the top. And then to the right, you can see right now we have the four quadrants there. Uh, you have your time elapsed uh, for that trip. You have your distance to empty, and that's gonna be regardless of which trip you have. Your mileage for that trip and then also you do have your average miles per gallon. Uh, now this vehicle only has 45 miles, all of them pretty much driven on the lot, so that's why the average miles are pretty low there. Uh, and you can uh, just uh, press and hold, as it says down there, hold OK to reset that. So you do have a trip one and trip two, and we're not gonna go through trip two because it's just the same as trip one. So you can have two different trips to be able to customize there and see that. Now if we move down, then you have the, actually it moves right into the trip two. And I did forget about these. On all these tabs, uh, when you go back to the left, uh, you're gonna see trip one, trip two, fuel economy and fuel history. You can just click that if you wanna go just to that one. Or once you move over, you can then go down and it goes to the next one in line that we would talk about. So in this case, it's your trip two. And then if we move down again, you're gonna to go to your fuel economy. And this is an instant fuel economy. So you show your average to the right, but that line is gonna adjust as you're driving and show you what fuel economy you're getting. If you're on the highway, it might go up a little bit. Uh, in town, maybe even stopped, it's gonna, you're gonna see it drop down to less uh, miles per gallon, of course. Now go on down where you have the fuel history. And this actually shows you your average uh, fuel over there to the side, but also the last, each of those different increments prior to this one of what your average was for that different increment right there move on down you're going to see the compass so you're going to have that compass in the middle and i think i'm uh, we're going to get up on the road so i can show you a clip of that hopefully it um, i haven't figured out yet in my fusion i really love that on the right side it shows me that compass with the uh, little uh, the speed limit sign that shows me what the speed limit is on that usually i have to look over to my screen over here uh, to be able to see that under the navigation and see you know what the speed limit is where I'm, uh, I'm what road I'm on and I kind of like that guide just in case I miss that speed limit sign I'm not paying attention and I think it's going to be over there hopefully we're going to take this for a drive and we'll see on that that sign hopefully will be located there and then we're going to move down and you have your auto start stop and this is going to be when the vehicles running right now I'll have it running but if I turn it on 
on uh, the vehicle if you're pulled up to the stoplight stop sign and you're in drive it's going to shut the vehicle off uh, that's called auto start stop and then when you let go of the brake it's going to st start it this will let you know if the auto start stop uh, is enabled or if it's disabled because you can easily disable it just by pressing the auto uh, start stop button right here on the dash so it'll show you if that's di been disabled in fact if i click it you'll see auto start stop deactivated by switch so it says how it's deactivated now let's say it's activated but you pull up the stoplight it actually flash up if you're on the screen and show you that the vehicle is actually uh, turned off so that's another feature that it'll show you that so i had go up to the top and go back and you'll see you're back up to that so you can get to either way you can go over to the press ok on the top and then move down through those different selections or you can move down and just get to that one that you want whether it be the nav navigation compass hit ok and you're right there and then you can just go back to the other ones that you want if you'd like to you do have to be on this screen to be able to move right on your tabs which we're going to do next we'll move right to the truck info and we'll go up to the top start at the top the truck the gauge view press OK and you're going to see in this case it does have the turbo so you have your PSI for your turbo there if we move down you have your tire pressure for all the different tires around the vehicle there and so that way you can see how your tire pressure is doing there if you need to maybe air one up a little bit and they will kind of change as you're uh, driving and with people passengers in here as well that PSI could adjust a little bit here and there but if you can see something that's drastically out it'll show you that nope we timed out here so let's turn that back on so we did have battery saver mode on, so it took us out of that. So, okay. Now going back, we're back up to the tire pressure. Let's go ahead and go down. You have your digital speedometer. So if you want to see that on here, instead of looking up the speedometer on the, on the right, you can have that digital speedometer as your display right there. If we go down, you're going to see your engine information. In this case, it has your engine hours, but then also your idle hours. So you can see running versus idle and what those hours are. We'll move back up to the top and go left. And again, you can get to any of those just by going down to the, those words and hitting the OK to get to just that one thing that you might want. Move to the right, we have the towing. So let's go through these. There's five sections in here. So we'll go to the status first. And as you can see there, it has uh, your, uh, basically, it shows the towing on your vehicle. So when you have, you know, something back there, it's going to actually show that uh, with that gauge there to show you, you know, if you're level or not, especially if you have a trailer back there and it's going to really bring that back down. You can see how that's going to adjust that right there with that gauge in the middle. And then to the right, you're going to see uh, as well the drivetrain and such, how that's going to look as well. So you can have that towing status there. Move down and you have trailer information. Right now, we don't have a trailer connected. But when you do connect a trailer, you're going to be able to get some information there on that particular trailer. So you can program up several different trailers if you need to. And I blink if we keep going, it actually lets us set that up. Um, well, next one down is the trailer light status. Uh, of course, no trailer detected now, uh, but it actually uh, lets you know if your lights are hooked up or not. So that's really nice to know because uh, we can make sure you're safe with that trailer and that the trailer lights are working and it shows you your light status for those with them plugged in. Very important. Uh, move on down, you have your trailer set up. So this is where you'd want to go to set up that new trailer or your first trailer. This is the first uh, one setting up. So you just press OK uh, for your trailer options. And you can see there has your trailer sway control. Uh, you can select your trailer. So if you have, and this is no active trailer now, default trailer. So you can, as you at, start more of them, you can set that up. And if we go down to, um, oops, hit over. Go down to trailer, uh, change trailer setting we can click on that and you can rename the trailer you can reset the distance so you can actually monitor how much you use different trailers especially if you use them and how long you've driven your vehicle with the different trailers on there you can change your blind spot measurement uh, because uh, and we'll get into this just a little bit you do have trailer uh, blind spot monitoring for your trailers with your f-150s your expeditions and your super duties so you can go in there and customize that you can add your trailer blind spot uh, as well um, with your conventional trailers and such so um, and then you can change your pro trailer sticker so when you set up your pro trailer backup assist uh, you can uh, move that that in there so you've got to customize that for the different trailers you can add all that your pro trailer backup assist as well you can set that up uh, and then it says right now no, no conventional trailers but when you hook up, hook up that uh, conventional trailer you can use a pro trailer backup assist to help you with that so this actually helps you go through all those different settings change the brake type uh, with that because this does have the integrated brake controller as well in here so you can set all that up as well in there uh, trailer brake effort 
uh, you have all those different and then you can delete that trailer as well so you can go through, through there for each of your trailers and this next one if you don't have a trailer you would add that trailer and you can go ahead and then you can see where you can name that right there too so a uh, real nice and easy to be able to do that so it's a great way to be able to manage your different trailers uh, put them program them in there uh, for that and be able to do that so let's go back left and we'll go back down and we have the connection checklist. So that way, if you're new to uh, hooking up trailers, you can make sure, do I have everything? Here's, your, here's my checklist, hit okay. And it tells you, you know, what type. Are you conventional, fifth wheel, gooseneck? So you can hit that conventional and then it shows you what to do. It takes you step by step. First, it says to connect that uh, ball coupler connected. Is it connected and locked? And then you go down, Are you? is your wiring connected? So do you have your four pin or seven pin wiring connected? Press okay. And then it says, you know, check for your light functionally correctly. So you want to go back there and make sure your lights are working, your turn signals, as well as your brake lights in there. Someone can help you with that, or you could probably uh, be able to do that uh, manually if you need to. And then go down, it says, do you have your safety chains connected? Make sure those are connected. And then you also here it says, is your tongue jack uh, raised up for you? So really just takes you through. If you adjusted your mirrors, and these uh, mirrors actually are not the trailer tow mirrors, but if you have those, if you uh, extended those out to adjust those as well, and then you go down to your uh, gain for your trailer brake controller as well uh, there. So you can adjust that uh, on there as well. I just hit that button. So, And then you can move down, and then you're back up to the top again. So it kind of really helps you out. It's Set the vehicle off again. So it really helps you out be able to connect. If you're new to uh, towing a trailer, this will give you a great guide and a checklist for you to do that. That's really cool how it does that. So we'll restart this and we'll go through the next uh, section here. Okay. Uh, and then we'll go back to the left. And then you can do that for a conventional fifth wheel or gooseneck as we talked about. And then go back up to the top. So now we'll go, we'll move over from towing to off road. Uh, so you have a couple of different things here. You have off road status and power distribution. So let's click on the first one your off road status. So it kind of shows you there on your vehicle side to side versus front to back, how level you are there with those two different gauges. And then it also shows you your power. So if you're in 4x4 mode, uh, you can, as we adjust that, you can see how the power now. When we take it from too high to four auto, it adjusts and gives you, you can see with the blue lines where the power is being driven to all four of those wheels uh, with the, if we put it into the four by four auto. So we'll take it back to too high and you can see that. And if we're not level, this one happens to be level front to back, side to side, as you can see. So you can see when you're doing some off-roading how, uh, how unlevel you might be to make sure you're safe when you're doing your off-roading. And then if we move down, you can also see the power distribution. Again, with the too high, it's going to show different power distribution based on that. And that's as you're driving, so we're standing still. It's not giving us anything with those uh, wheels there, but it shows you where the power is being di distributed on the four wheels there. And then if we go back left, that's, your, that's all your off-road settings. So then let's go ahead and go right. And now we're going to go into our settings here, our main settings for the vehicle. So you can see here, it does have cross traffic alert. I did pick, this is a Lariat. That's pretty well loaded, uh, loaded up Lariat, but it does have your bliss, cross traffic alert, all those different power boards and everything on there. So you can, oh, so we can kind of see what all these mean. So if we go up to, uh, if we're at the top, the cross traffic alert, you can deactivate and activate the cross traffic alert. What that cross traffic alert is, is if you're backing up, someone's gonna cross your path behind you, it's gonna alert you with the light in the side of the mirror, a message on the dash, and a series of tones that you need to, that you need to stop because there's someone in your way as you're backing up. So um, you can activate and deactivate that. Maybe if you wanna deactivate it, if you have a trailer hooked up, so you can deactivate it that way. Rear park assist is the same way. If you have a trailer hooked up, you don't want that rear park uh, aid up there because it's gonna the, the sensors will go off. They're on the bumpers uh, constantly, so you can deactivate it through there. And then your trailer bliss, your blind spot information. So right now it's unchecked. So if you do have a trailer on there, you go ahead and check that box, and it's gonna monitor the blind spot of your trailer as well as your truck, uh, which is very convenient. So and there's just I just, I'm not sure why Ford didn't put the bliss in here. Um, you'd think it would make sense in there, but it is actually in a different section we're going to get to in just a little bit, I think under the vehicle. If we go down to pre-collision and hit OK, you can see the pre-collision means if you're, you're driving along, 
person in front of you is stopped uh, and you're not slowing down or hitting your brake, it's going to alert you with a series of lights on the dash and tones that you need to stop or hit your brakes. And this shows you the alert sensitivity for that. You want on high sensitivity, low, or normal. It comes from the factory in the normal setting. I've always used mine in the normal setting and felt pretty confident with that uh, setting, uh, that setting there. If we go back and move down, you have your active braking, which means it will actually break your vehicle if you don't. So if you uncheck that, then it will not initiate the brakes uh, for you or go ahead and engage the brakes if you're not hitting your brakes yourself. So that's where you would check and uncheck that. And then your pre-collision on. So that would be if whether or not you want that alert on whatsoever. So if you hit that, you can turn it on or turn it off for your pre-collision assist. Don't know why you'd want to deactivate that. Uh, nice safety feature that you should always have on. Uh, go back to the left, you have a DTE uh, calculation. This is distance to empty calculation. So if I click OK, you have normal and you have towing. So it will adjust your distance to empty based on whether or not you have a trailer or not. And so you wouldn't want to, if you do have a trailer in there, you want to make sure you reset that. Uh, if you don't have that trailer, you may want to make sure you go back in here and put normal. Otherwise, your distance to empty will be off for you. So let's see if we change this when we check that. So if I check the towing, it takes it from where right now it says 84 miles to empty. It changed it to 64 miles to empty. So it's trying to adjust that distance to empty based on what you're pulling with or whether or not you're pulling a trailer or not. And go back, we'll go to gauge selection and hit OK. And you have that turbo gauge and you have transmission temperature. So you can see as I change that, up there on the right, there's four gauges that are showing up at the top. They have your you know, temperature, uh, your oil temperature, your uh, water temperature, and then you see up there, if I change that from turbo, it actually changes and switches it. But if I go down to uh, your temp, transmission temp, it's going to adjust that over there, as you can see. So you have two different options for that fourth gauge at the top right there. And then if we go, uh, it takes us back left once we pick one, and we go down to advanced settings. And now here we go. We're going to talk about most of your advanced settings. And again, my vehicle it turns off on me there. So let's go ahead and turn it off and turn it back on. Now advanced settings is where a lot of the different settings for your vehicle are going to be located. So if we go to vehicle, that's where a lot of these are going to be at. Here's your engine, auto engine off. What auto engine off is, is when you go ahead and you, maybe you're running, maybe you're stopped at a game or something, and you have the vehicle running, uh, it'll automatically shut the engine off after some uh, a certain length of time. If you don't want the, the vehicle to be turned off, you uncheck that button. This is a lot like your auto start stop where you would have to uncheck it for each time you start the vehicle. So if you're somewhere and it's about ready to turn off on you and it warns you, hey, it's going to turn off in the next 20 seconds, you can go in here real quick, uncheck it, and it'll keep it running. Now here's where your blind spot information is actually going to be uh, activated and deactivated is under the vehicle settings. So that's for your blind spot. So if there's someone in your blind spot, it's going to put a light in the corner of the mirror and let you know that someone's there. Don't know why you'd want to uncheck that because it's just a little light that most people may or may not even pay attention to, uh, but also kind of it's a nice warning for you as well as you're driving. And your easy entry and exit seat. I don't know if you did see when that vehicle turned off, the seat moves back. Uh, you can activate and deactivate that. So maybe if you have a hard time, if the seat's really far back and you're shorter, you can't even reach the brake to start the vehicle, you may want to deactivate that and just have it to be set in one location for that. And what it'll do is when you do start the vehicle, it'll move that seat and the steering wheel, if you have that power tilt and telescoping steering wheel, to the position of the last driver. And then if we go down to lighting and press OK, you're going to see a couple of different options. One of them is auto high beam. Uh, now, most of the trucks that are Lariat and above, as well for the Super Ds as well as your F-150s, will have the auto high beams. And what it'll do is, when the, just like your headlights, if there's no one in front of you, it's dark out in a dark street, it's going to automatically turn those high beams on uh, and deactivate them if someone approaches you. You can activate and deactivate that in this setting screen, because some people do not like that. It maybe will pop on, on a, maybe a, a curvy road or something. It'll turn them on and then someone approaches and almost it's almost too late. So some people don't like that so you can uncheck it right there. And then your auto lamp delay. An auto lamp headlamp is when you have an auto setting it's going to automatically turn those headlights on when it gets dark and turn them off when it gets light. And this is the, the delay for when it gets light or dark. So whether it be it comes from the factory on 20 seconds but you do can turn that off 10. You can even uh, fill up it to 120 seconds to turn those lights on. Go back left and you have your daytime running lights. You can activate and deactivate your daytime running lights. So if you like those on, especially as a safety precaution so people can make sure that they see you, uh, you can always activate and deactivate those daytime running lights right through the lighting switch there. Go down to locks and hit OK. 
we have auto unlock as well as remote unlock. Auto unlock means that when you shut the vehicle off, uh, when you come to your complete stop, put it in park, shut the vehicle off, it's going to automatically unlock the doors. So you can, uh, some people may not like that because maybe they're stopped, they shut the vehicle off, but they're not ready to get out and they don't want them to auto unlock uh, those doors. You can uncheck it right through that. If we go to remote unlock, press OK, you can see driver's door and all the doors. And what that means is on your remote, when you hit the unlock button one time, what is it going to do? Is it going to open all the doors or just the driver's door? So it doesn't mean that it won't unlock the other doors. You would just have to hit that remote twice to unlock the rest of the doors if you have it on the driver's door. So some people like to have it on driver's door because if they're maybe in the parking lots and such or busy towns and, and everything, they don't want the other doors opening if they're only getting in themselves and they're uh, by themselves. They would rather have that on the driver's door. Okay, go left and go left again and we're going to go down to oil life reset and if you press ok this is where if you do your own oil changes or your of course your Ford dealership would go in here to reset your oil life so when they when you do your oil change you want to go in here press ok to hold to reset it and to reset it back to 100 percent go on down and you have your alarms so you didn't hear the chimes earlier uh, we can set this to all sensors active uh, which means all your different perimeter alarm around the vehicle and uh, you have perimeter sensing as well it's going to alert you and give you those different alarms and then you can also ask on exit you can uncheck and check that as well and then moving on down you have your power running boards this does have power running boards on it uh, so your xlt 202 a's will not so this would not be active uh, but when you go on up to i think uh, limited you will get power boards so you press ok and this tells you if you want them on auto which means when you open the door they're going to automatically come out or you can have them off to where they don't come down at all, or you can have them to where they stay out. And maybe you want to stay out as if maybe you want to clean those off. So you can have it on out, uh, even with the door shut, then you can clean them off and then you can put it back to the auto setting. And then we go back left and we'll go down and we have remote start. So click OK. Uh, this vehicle does have remote start on it. Most of your Lariats will um, on your F-150s uh, and Super Duties. And some of your Expeditions, 202A Equipment Group would not have that. So in this remote start screen is where you'd want to control when you remote start the vehicle, whether it be using the app or your remote, what is going to be um, what the controls are going to look like. So if we look at climate control, you have it on auto setting or last setting. And auto setting means it's going to turn the defrost on for your climate control. Uh, automatically defrost the windshield. They're thinking it's winter time. You want to defrost it. The vehicle's cold. So that's what the auto setting Last setting would be maybe in the summertime. Maybe you want to cool the vehicle off and you know the air conditioner is on when you got out of the vehicle. You uh, change that to last setting, remote start the vehicle, and it's going to cool the vehicle off instead of using the defrost. Move that to back to the left, and now it tells you for your seats as well as your steering wheel what's going to be doing the same thing. Auto would be heated steering wheel, heated seats, and then you can or you can have those turned off. So again, during the summertime, you wouldn't want those heated seats on or heated steering wheel. Move back to the left and this uh, duration will tell you if how long will it stay remote started will it stay started for five minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes for that cycle and it will cycle through twice before it won't uh, restart the vehicle so uh, after if it goes for 15 minutes it dies you need to remote start it for longer you can remote start it again and, and so it could stay actually remote started for up to 30 minutes uh, with those two cycles and then system would be whether or not you want to activate or deactivate the remote start settings altogether Move back left and we'll go down to wiper controls. Press OK here and you have courtesy wipe. Most vehicles will have that. And you have rain sensing wipers. So courtesy wipe would be if you turn your wipers on uh, and you go to turn them off, uh, then or especially your washer. When you do the washer to clean off the windshield and the wipers go on and then it'll stop and then wait, it'll hesitate and it'll do one more wipe. And that's to get any last dribbles on the windshield. And then rain sensing wipers, if you have an auto setting there, what it'll do is go ahead and turn those wipers on. And when it starts to rain, it has a sensor up here on the top of the windshield that lets it know that it's raining. And then it'll, as it rains harder, it'll wipe even faster. So you can deactivate the rain sensing wipers if that's something you'd rather do manually, you can do that. Go back left and go down and we're back up to the top of the vehicle settings. We'll go left again and we'll go down to my key. Let me talk about this real quickly. If we hit OK, you have the my key status. If we press OK, it tells you that there's two admin keys. There will be two, two keys with your vehicle. And right now they come from the factory, both set up as admin keys. And what my key is, is it allows you to be able to set program one of those keys to a my key, which means it's going to eliminate how fast they can go. It'll uh, limit the volume on your radio. 
as well as if they don't have their seatbelt on, the radio won't turn on at all. So you can set up those different keys. So if I go back left and go down to create my key, press OK, and I hold the OK button, it will create this key that I have with me as being a my key. So it takes an admin over to a uh, my key. That's the key you give to your, your uh, student driver and they would use that key to, uh, to start your vehicle and everything and that way it eliminates and makes them a, a better and safer driver. If we go back to the left to display setup and this is where you're going to see your different measurements and how you want them displayed. So if we hit measurements and hit OK you can see you can have it on miles and gallons. You can have liters, kilometers. Uh, you can diff change that. depends on uh, what is your preference there. Same way for your temperature. So you hit OK and you have your Fahrenheit or your Celsius as your display there for your temperature. And then going on down to tire pressure as well as on this one PSI, KPA or bar no matter what is your preference there. And then for your language as well. We have three options. We have English, Spanish and French as options. So maybe if you're in Canada you'd rather use French or maybe you're down south and maybe you are from uh, you know uh, south and you speak Spanish you might want to change that to Spanish there. And so this is where you'd want to go in to set that. So we'll go on back and we've gone through all of our advanced settings. So we'll go back again and we're back up to the top. So we've gone through all of our settings. Now I want to move over to that custom view clear on the left side over here. Uh, what's great about this view is you can customize it. You can see it automatically comes with trip one. It also comes with fuel economy and towing information. You can also go down to configure my view. And when you click OK there and click uh, OK again for options, you can, it gives you a couple of different options. You can add and remove screens. So if I click the add and remove, let me show you how that works. You can go through any of the different settings that are up there on the top that we talked about, the different tabs up there, whether it be the vehicle info, your towing, your off-road, all those are up there. You can uh, go through any of those and add those. So let's go, let's say let's, we want to go to towing and click towing screens. And let's say we want to add the uh, towing status or let's do the light check. Uh, we want to add that. So we check that box. And let's say we go left and we want to go to the off-road screen and we hit OK there and we want that display. And so let's say we want the power distribution. Uh, we can go ahead and click on that box. Now if we go back left again and then go back, keep going left till we get to the main my view, you'll see there's more boxes now over there. So if we move up, there's that power distribution, there's your tow uh, light uh, status, and then we still have the other, the, the trailer information as well as the economy and your trip up there. So you can easily just stay in this one screen and flip down. So you have your the ones you use the most on the left side. You don't have to go through the different tabs to the right and down and hit OK and everything. It's all going to be right here uh, easy to get to and access uh, right there. So uh, again you can go down to the very bottom and customize that. Now let's say if you don't like the order it's in. You can go down to reorder and hit OK and you can see what order they're in. Let's say I want the uh, power distribution. Maybe I want it moved up to the top. You can do that, hit OK, and now it's at the top. So if we go left, uh, back to the main, and we go to the top, power distribution is now is, is at the top. So you can customize that to about anything over there. Uh, as you can see in that uh, the screen, you can add and remove. Uh, we'll take that off or we'll uncheck that. Uh, but you can see the towing screens. Uh, you know, you have all that right there. Uh, there are a couple of the things that aren't on here. Not everything is in here, but some of your main display views are in here. So even if you go to the trailer, con like connecting up a trailer, that is not an, an option in there uh, to be able to customize. But your, you know, like your trip and fuel, you can change. If you want the navigation instead, you can check it. Uh, maybe the auto start, stop, whatever it might be. Maybe you want trip one and trip two over there on your uh, my view you can do that and customize that so that's pretty cool how you can customize that and add them reordered as well and make it a more custom view on that left side over there so hopefully you got a lot of information out of this uh, this productivity screen for your trucks and your expeditions uh, very functional uh, really catered towards towing as well as connect up your uh, your trailer and off-road because that's what you're going to do mostly with your trucks and your your larger SUV. Uh, so you'll see these again in your trucks and uh, your expeditions. You will not be able to see this this type of screen in any of your vehicles and most of your uh, smaller SUVs. Uh, but it's a great custom uh, eight-inch screen display screen here. And hopefully you got a lot of information out of this. Uh, if I miss I miss something or maybe something you want to add it to it, if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and put those comments down below. Love getting that feedback and helping us to make this the best video that we can. Thanks for watching one of our videos on our on YouTube. We do ask if you haven't uh, subscribed to our YouTube channel, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button down below. 
That way you can subscribe to our channel and get some great walk around videos on Ford and Lincoln products, as well as some cool aftermarket trucks that we build and even some Roush Mustangs. So definitely be looking for those videos. Hit that, uh, sub that notification bell as well. That way you can get notified the next time we have another video uploaded to our YouTube channel. Uh, don't forget to, while you're at it, go ahead and go over to our channel and browse around on our playlist. We put all the different model uh, trim specific videos within each model. So you on the F-150, you're going to see all the different six trims and those walk around videos right there under that playlist. So definitely uh, check those out if you're a first time watching our channel and uh, check uh, and be able to see that. Also, if you're the first time watching one of our videos, go ahead and smash that like button. Or if you like the video, go ahead and do that. Let other people know it's a great video they need to watch. I'd appreciate it. It helps out the video as well as our channel. Also, too, if you want to, you can follow me on Twitter or Facebook. I'm at, I'm at Tim Bartz. Uh, check those out. And uh, I always retweet all of our video links on my Twitter account. So definitely, if you want to make sure you get those, you can follow me there and you can get those different video links uh, when those videos go live. So I hope you really enjoyed this. If you want to check out some of our, our current inventory on our website or on our dealership, you can go to LawMacArthur.com. They're in each one of our vehicles. You can check for availability, schedule test drive. You can see pictures as well as a complete uh, VR experience and outside as well as an inside perspective on each one of our vehicles uh, that we have in stock. Also, if you want to, uh, if you like some of our inventory, you want to have this vehicle shipped for free to you, uh, do uh, give us a call or send us a text message at 785-378-5031 or you can call us toll free 1-800-874-6316. Again, I hope you really enjoyed this video. Until the next one, we'll see you later.